Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to be looking today at converting linear equations, converting from standard form to slope intercept form. Um, generally speaking, you'll get an equation in standard form, and then what you want to do in most cases is convert to slope intercept form. The slope intercept form of the line is also called the y equals mx plus b form of the line, and that's the best form for getting the most amount of information from an equation. That In that form, you can see the slope of the line. You can also see the exact spot where it crosses the y-intercept. So it's a very helpful form of an equation, whereas the standard form, you can't really see all that much just by looking at it. So in this recording, what I'm going to do is, in kind of a fast motion, show you over and over and over and over again exactly how to convert from linear equations from standard form to slope intercept form. So we're just going to do several different questions. And again, the reason is because that's basically like converting it from something you can't use into something that you can use. So this is the standard form of a line where you have a number times x plus a number times y is equal to a third number. It's also called ax plus by equals c. Just saying that these numbers here are, are different constants, a, b, and c. That doesn't really matter, though. What we want to do is get y completely by itself. So we're going to use all of the tools that we've been using throughout the year to isolate our variable of y. First, we're going to peel off the layers all around it. So we're going to get rid of that 6x first. And then we're going to get rid of that 2. Then we'll have our y completely by itself. You'll notice that we do the same exact steps. So as I progress through this, we're going to start going a little bit more quickly. So the first step is to get rid of 6x. We have to subtract 6x. We can't do that to just one side of the equal sign, so we subtract it from both sides of the equal sign. <clears throat> Again, subtracting or getting rid of the x value is a constant step you're going to have to do every single time. Now we just have 2y on the left side of the equal sign and everything else on the right. To get the y completely by itself, we need to get rid of that 2. And to do that, this says 2 times y. We're going to divide by 2. And I just wrote this as a standard, divide by the coefficient of y. Whatever is in front of y, you divide every single term by that number. 2y divided by y by 2, I'm sorry, will cancel out, and you'll be left with just y by itself on the left-hand side. Six, negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. 12 divided by 2 is 6. And there you go. This is the slope-intercept form of a line. It's, good, it's a good form for setting up tables of values, and it's also good because it shows you that the slope is whatever number is in front of x. It's often referred to as m. And our y-intercept is the number on the end of the equation, so in this case, 6. So this is what we call, again, y equals mx plus b. And b is the y-intercept. m is the slope. OK, let's do another couple examples. We're going to pick up the pace a little bit here. And we'll start noticing patterns of how we do this. First step, subtract the x value from both sides of the equation. In this case, it was 3x. So we take away 3x, getting rid of it from the left side of the equation, leaving us with 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 16. I divide every term by the coefficient of y. So this number 4 that appears in front of y, I'm going to divide every single term by 4. Then I simplify for my final answer. And this tells me my slope is equal to negative 3 over 4, whatever number is in front of x. x. It can be a negative variable or a negative fraction. It can be a decimal. It can be whatever. That's right there. That's our slope. And where this line crosses the y-intercept is the number up here, which is 4. Let's do another one. This one here has a no variable, or no coefficient, I'm sorry, in front of this variable, x. So we're just going to subtract x from both sides of the equation, we're leaving us with 15y is equal to negative x plus 3. The next step, if you recall, is that you divide by the coefficient of y. 
In this case, 15 is the number in front of y, so every single term will get divided by 15. There's, those two will cancel each other out, leaving you with y by itself. Negative x over 15 is the same as saying negative 1 over 15x. So when I simplify, I'm going to write it that way, negative 1 over 15 and x, and then 3 over 15 reduces to 1 fifth. And the reason I do that, instead of leaving x over 15, is because then I can tell you exactly what my slope is. My slope is one of negative 1 over 15. My y-intercept is 1 fifth. So again, you can have fractions, you can have negative fractions. We're going to, in the next one, we're going to have a positive slope for a change, I think. But all of these numbers, it doesn't matter what the numbers are. Whatever is in front of x is your slope. And whatever is at the end is your y-intercept. It can be positive, negative, fractions, decimals, doesn't really matter. All right, let's do one more here. We're going to follow the same exact steps. First, we're going to, in this case, we have negative 24x. So we're going to actually add the x value to both sides of the equal sign, because negative 24x and positive 24x will cancel each other out leaving us with 8y on the left side, 24x minus 16 on the right side. Now we're going to, same step as always at this point, divide by the coefficient of y. Whatever is in front of that y, you divide all three terms by it. 8y divided by 8, 24x divided by 8, and 16 divided by 8. In this case, negative 16 divided by 8. That will leave us with y is equal to 3x minus 2. This is the first question where we've had a positive slope. Our slope is positive 3. Again, whatever number is in front of x is our slope. And the y-intercept is negative 2. In other words, this line crosses the y-intercept at the point 0, negative 2. And that is our work for today. And this is practice converting between the standard form of a linear equation into the slope-intercept form of the linear equation, and then being able to identify the slope and the y-intercept in that equation, in that form of the linear equation, I should say. All right, hope that's been helpful practice for you, and have a wonderful day.